Good morning, good morning, good morning, Aletheia Baptist Church, uh, friends and family members, and saved folks. Uh, this is October the 18th, Sunday School. The title is God Confirms the Covenant. The lesson text is Exodus 24, 1 to 11. And the Golden Text is interesting this time. I'll read that. The Golden Text is, for Christ is not enter into the holy of places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, Hebrews 9, 24. It's interesting on this golden text here, and it kind of tells about uh, the New Testament, but how they practice it in the Old Testament, and what Christ did for us. For Christ uh, is not entering into the holy places made with hands, but the places what Moses is going to establish is a whole place made with hands. And uh, all the things that Moses is going to do is going to point toward Jesus Christ. And very interesting. And to get a full understanding of what Christ went through and that precious blood that he had, you know, is to learn about the Old Testament and what they did. Since we're talking about covenants, let's go through some of the covenants. The first covenant was the um, Edemic covenant. Or <clears throat> in the Edemic covenant, there was two parts. The Edemic Covenant was, uh, was in, uh, during the time of Adam and Eve and the time of innocence. In, in, innocence. And uh, they were in a <clears throat> paradise place and they sinned. And when they sinned, uh, consequences happened and creation was cursed. And uh, they tried to cover themselves first with leaves and God says, that's not going to get it. So something had to die. It says in this covenant with Moses is to talk a whole lot about the blood. And in order for God to overlook our sin, we have to, he has to look through it through the blood. And the blood of an animal, life had to be taken. And God's trying to teach people that our sin is so bad. And for a holy God to look at us, something had to suffer for it. So in approaching God, God has to look through us through the blood or something being sacrificed. And eventually the ultimate sacrifice is not going to be the blood of bulls and animals. It's going to be our precious Savior, Jesus the Christ. And God is so merciful and so um, gracious that he didn't extend what we deserve. And what we deserve is to go to hell. Because what Adam did to us, we were all inside Adam at that time was uh, he created in us a curse that we were spiritually dead, unable to satisfy a holy God. And also, to understand the blood, understand how holy God is. 
<clears throat> and how precious uh, this whole thing is because eventually we're going to, those who are saved are going to be spending eternity in heaven. And in heaven, uh, justified, sanctified, made with our glorified bodies, uh, we won't have any sin. And uh, down here, we're living in the place where sin <coughs> and saved people exist. And uh, a lot of people fail before God because of their old nature. So that the Edemic covenant, again, is uh, what happened in the Garden of Eden and the curse of uh, creation. And the Adamic covenant is grace. Uh, and also the curses that sin in the sin of Adam and Eve. But God provided for that sin through telling Adam and Eve that the, um, the plant leaves ain't going to make it. We got to kill something and we got to give you some animal skins. The next one is the Noahic covenant with Noah. And Noah, the world because of sin, and it really expresses our old nature, was so bad and with a holy God that can't exist. But the grace of God allowed Adam and his um, family, I mean, allowed Noah and his family to exist and multiply the earth afterwards, after the flood. And, uh, and God gave the rainbow a sign that he'll never destroy the earth with the flood anymore. The next covenant was Abrahamic covenant. And you can see some of the Abrahamic covenant fulfilled in this lesson with establishing God's nation, Israel. Abrahamic, uh, he had a great name. Uh, he had numerous physical descendants, uh, a multitude of nations, promises regarding uh, his nations called Israel. The world will be blessed through him. And the physical line of Abraham, we're going to see the Messiah. Next one is the Palestinian covenant, which is a land covenant. And it's a conditional covenant. And diso if you disobey, Israel got scattered. And then when they cried out, they got restored. And when they obeyed God, they got blessings. The one we're going to be dealing with today is the Mosaic covenant. Uh, <clears throat> which we're going to see the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, and the rest of the law, over 600 commands, 300 positive and 300 negative. And you can see the history books of the Old Testament that explains like that between Joshua to Esther and the details of how Israel obeyed and failed the law. The next one would be the, David, the Davidic covenant. Uh, that's in the seed aspect. The lineage would last forever. Uh, the line from David would be seated on the throne with Jesus the Christ. And the last covenant, or the one that we're in, is the new covenant. And uh, our covenant is it's a great covenant. It's with Jesus Christ, which the Old Testament was looking forward to. And uh, we're so blessed uh, to have Jesus Christ as our blood sacrifice in our covenant, and how God responds to us compared to how he responded to Israel. Let's go um, read some of these verses here. Exodus 24, 1. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, though, and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. Uh, with, you can see uh, leadership uh, People had different positions here. Uh, Moses was closer uh, than Aaron and Nadab and the Bayou and then 70 of the elders. 70 of the elders would have been uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, God's trying to establish his government, co government and uh, selecting these few leaders here. And then they'll tell some of the things that God's going to tell them to relate to the people. And they're all important to God. <clears throat> um, Aaron's, uh, Aaron had four sons. His two oldest ones was Nadab and Abihu. They were going to be priests because of the, the Levitical priesthood. And Aaron's the father was that, of that. Nadab and Abihu, very interesting. Uh, later on, uh, although they're priests, and they were held in a, they got to have a pretty good position to get closer to God. But the failure 
of um, some of the leaders. And later on, uh, they're going to promise to do everything, but these two people here, Nadab and Nabayu, eventually they're going to get the wrong type of fire to offer to God with an incense offering, but they take the fire from the wrong place. They should take it from the brazen altar, and uh, when they display not really understanding how holy God is, and they tried to present this offering incorrectly, and the fire came out from God and devoured them. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with them. Uh, God's holy. Uh, his his uh, commandments, and when he says don't, means don't. And there's a lot of times where people overrode that don't. One would be when um, David had some people uh, carting the Ark of the Covenant incorrectly. And God allowed it to fall off, and the man touched it, and he died because they didn't respect the holiness of God. And we got to understand the holiness of God with our uh, sinful, sinful character that we have, our sinfulness. But God's making a way for us. But we got to respect his holy God and worship him as he's a God. Uh, God's the greater, and we're the less. But God's grace and mercy loves us a lot. So we got to respect our position and where we can go. There is even a line drawn down on the place that they're at. They're at the Mount Sinai, and Israel is kind of based at the base of the mountain there. And, uh, and they got positions that they can go and positions that they can't go because of God's holiness. And you can even see more of that with the um, Ark of the Covenant and whatnot. There were some places that man could not go. And at the end of this book here, Moses was not even allowed to go into the um, Holy of Holies area. So Moses came and told the people, there's three here, all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord hath said will we do. Uh, it's important to know God's word and know it correctly. So I study God's word. Uh, got to be very careful. That I have a correct biblical worldview. And if I don't, I'm wrong. And God's always right. So it's very important that I know God's word correctly. And God emphasized that. Uh, and uh, he spoke it at one time. They can even hear God talking from the top of the mountain. And uh, Moses came down and told the, the people all the words of the Lord. And a lot of emphasis on awe because it's, it helps us to approach God correctly. And that even goes on today. And God diligently rewards those who diligently seek him. And all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord has said we will do. Uh, they said this, all the words which the Lord has said we will do, said it three times here in this chapter. It says it in three, four, and seven verses. Uh, I would have said it a little bit different. As uh, and in witnessing, you share the gospel with someone, you, justification, they get saved. Then in sanctification, they're growing in the Lord. And understanding how frail I was, and I know what it took for me to come to know God and how God washed me, where I, cannot, I could never say that uh, I'm not a sinner anymore because I know God. Because uh, God's commandments and his word and whatnot, I don't fall 100% uh, to that. I have to grow toward that. I have to struggle. And I have to get on my knees and pray, God, help me to learn your word better. And getting around other mature Christians who have gone through the same thing. And uh, one thing about <laughs> other Christians who are mature, who care about uh, babes in Christ, they will pray for you. They will stick with you. They will help you to grow. And hopefully they're teaching you correctly. So make sure that you're hearing sound doctrine. And all the words of the Lord and all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord have said, we will do, which uh, they didn't do. They failed miserably. At one point there, Moses is on top of the mountain for about 40 days. They thought it was too long. And although at a distance they can look up and see the magnificence of God, with the lightning and smoke and fire and all that stuff there. And they decided to go outside the word of God. And they wanted uh, Aaron to um, build them a golden calf so they can worship God. And uh, that's the first 
of the Ten Commandments, putting another idol before God. And they did that. And uh, God responded with judgment. And there was even an argument up there where God saying, hey, I'm going to get rid of these people. And uh, Moses interceded and told God, what the other nations going to see? What are they going to say? And whatnot. And he talked God into not doing that. But God, the grace and mercy and long suffering, he um, still pro projected judgment on these people. So God, although he's long suffering, he's gracious, he's mercy, there's also uh, judgment sometimes. And it can be hard. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar unto the hill. And 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, and again, the altar. Uh, and this is for the nation Israel. Uh, this is the covenant. And again, we're going to see the blood. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. Uh, young men, uh, uh, they maybe not too much is said, but they could have been part of the Levitical priesthood, the descendants of Aaron. Uh, maybe Aaron and Moses helped them to do it correctly. Uh, young men would probably help to get a young bull with, with no blemishes to get ready for the altar. They normally had to skin it, uh, drain the blood, uh, wash out the internal organs, and um, burn it. Uh, burnt offerings is that burnt up totally on the altar. Peace offerings is like a goodwill offering. I just want to thank God. And again, <clears throat> the blood. Uh, and something had to die to, um, to, to satisfy a holy God. And the graciousness of God, he didn't put us in the hell, but he gave away. In the Old Testament, uh, again, the death of animals. Uh, projecting to uh, one day where there's only going to be one sacrifice, and that's going to be the blood of Jesus Christ. And Moses took um, half of the blood and put it in basins, and then half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Again, this is a covenant. Uh, a part on the altar, and God's going to look through that altar and on the people who are sinful. Uh, so that God can look through on uh, in the temple mount or the, the mobile temple mount in the Ark of the Covenant, they had the mercy seat in there. And uh, <coughs> the two angels who faced, uh, with the, with faced each other in a sense with their wings spread out high. Uh, and uh, when the blood was sprinkled on there, God would look through that blood to us. Uh, And he took the, the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, all the Lord hath said we will do and be obedient. There he, again, he's saying, uh, we're going to do everything that God said do. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you, concerning all these words. The Old Testament, I uh, really appreciate being in the Old Testament. We're in the church age. Uh, we're the bride of Christ. They look, they're looking forward to that one day where they won't have to do this um, every, throughout the day, throughout the months, throughout every year. The year of Young Kippur when they offer one sacrifice for the whole nation. And they're looking forward to this time of Christ. And they were saved and understanding and believing and having faith in Jesus Christ to come. And uh, with us, we look backwards at Christ dying on the cross for us. Uh, we don't have to go through all the, um, uh, the holies of holies and having got, seeing the, the presence and the spirit of God hovering over, these, uh, over the temple. Because with the New Testament, Christ died. The, the Old Testament uh, <clears throat> area would not tore from top to bottom. The veil that covered it tore from top to bottom, saying that this is no more. And those priests back then, they were always sacrificing animals. But with Jesus Christ coming, the perfect Savior, the Son of God, uh, he did it once. And then that, uh, 
uh, for Christ does not enter into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. So our, um, it's a strong covenant. And what we do now is the Holy Spirit is inside of us because of the, the precious blood of God's son, God, Jesus Christ. Uh, we can uh, approach God boldly. We don't have to have a priest. And matter of fact, it makes us priests. And we can, inter we can intercede for other people. And hopefully that we're being, we are good witnesses and sharing God's um, gospel. And uh, this nation, Israel, God was trying to bring them on this covenant to the position where their light would shine so much that other nations was, would say, what a mighty God you have. And I want that. But they never established that. Uh, so hopefully that we're establishing that, that we, um, we're justified, we're saved, God's given us a gift, uh, and we're sanctified, studying God's word and growing daily uh, and helping others. And again, witnessing, sharing the gospel whenever we get the chance. You know, uh, God's precious blood is, is great, and not to be lukewarm, but sharing the gospel. And that's where the nation of Israel should have been, and not making false promises or failing, because God's holy and he will judge. Okay. <clears throat> so the, the covenant is being, being completed here. Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you, concerning all these words. Then Moses uh, went up, then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God, they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of the sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. God is so gracious. Uh, he wants to, um, to sup with us, to commune with us. But we have to recognize our, um, what type of people we are. We have a, a God that's given us, given us his word, that we can seek him, that we can put our old nature through God's word in control. And... Uh, and have a heart that, um, that satisfies God, that helps out our prayer life, our, 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 um, and to, to live our whole life and give God nothing is terrible. But uh, put God in his proper position and worship him and understand him and study his word. And uh, in this covenant here, after it's all done, and God accepted the covenant because of the blood, he sups with them. Uh, and... <clears throat> supping with God, uh, this nation in a sense with supping with God shows that God's uh, accepting this here, this uh, covenant. And uh, one fact here is that they saw God, and there's a lot of, uh, uh, it's kind of hard to understand because with our old nature being, our sinfulness, you can't look at God and, and live. So what did they, what did they see? Uh, a lot of times in the, that Christ, when he was here, he was veiled. So we were able to see Christ. And there was one um, episode in the New Testament where they asked Christ, uh, hey, show, um, what's God like? Uh, show us God. And Christ said, have you been with me this long and you have not seen? And uh, so, again, Christ was fully man, fully God. And God loves us so much that he shows something of his glory. Because God wants to commune with us, and that's what he's doing. Even in the Old Testament times where Christ had not paid the penalty for our lives, where we can approach God boldly, he made a way so that they can see him. Uh, and, um, and they didn't die. Uh, and that should have brought them closer to God. And with that in place... And uh, that's going to end our lesson where God confirms the covenant.